Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Pocket Now Weekly Podcast, hosted by yours truly. It's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? As you can see, I'm doing something a little bit different for this episode, uh, but this is something that I tried to do a couple of weeks ago on the way to CES 2020. Yes, it's a car cast, uh, so that means I have uh, the Osmo Pocket as my camera right now, so I can ki- get rid of those micro jitters, so it's stabilized footage, uh, but also I have the face mic so that I can keep things as good as possible when it comes to the audio. Now, the reason why uh, this is interesting is because I'm trying to do this again while on my way to yet another show. So I'm kind of doing a take two on this. Uh, But the ride to CES 2020 was really fun. Obviously, I had Issa Rodriguez as my passenger, and we got into a lot of fun stuff during that drive uh, that unfortunately wasn't able to see the light of day because we couldn't finish the podcast properly at the time. Uh, If you remember a couple of weeks ago, CES 2020's first podcast was just an audio podcast because Jaime and I did not have the ability to get together. But hopefully you enjoyed all of the CES 2020 coverage. Obviously most of it was done by Jaime and Diego. So big ups to those guys. They did a great job covering it for Pocket Now while I took care of the podcast. And last week we had Nick Gray on, uh, the editor-in-chief of Fandroid, and we had a wonderful conversation, the three of us. Uh, So I'm going to go through some of the comments from last week's show a little bit later in the show. But today I'm on my way to a different show. And that's what I really wanted to highlight on this episode is the fact that there's plenty other trade shows uh, obviously throughout the year that are outside the CESs or the MWCs of the world and the one I'm going to right now is incredibly different Uh, definitely not a mobile show mobile tech show it's more of a music show and it's called NAMM One of my favorite parts about NAMM is that it happens locally for me. I live in Los Angeles, uh, and it happens at the Anaheim Convention Center. Now, NAMM stands for the National Association of Music Merchants, I believe. But if I'm wrong on that, we're going to get a bit of an education on what NAMM actually is by a one Adam Molina, who I'm actually driving out to see right now. Uh, Adam Molina is one of the main contributors to a website called Sound Guys, uh, and they deal with a lot of audio products, uh, mostly headphones and whatnot, but of course NAMM is right up their alley when it comes to music shows. Adam is also one of my former colleagues back when I used to work at Android Authority, as Sound Guys is one of the affiliated websites. So Adam and I go back quite a while. Uh, We're going to get some brunch and talk a little bit about NAMM. I'm going to have Adam actually educate us about what NAMM is all about, Uh, and then you'll see a little bit of footage from the actual show itself. That's the reason why this podcast is coming out a little bit later than usual. This is when I could schedule some time with Adam, but but also, I'm heading to NAM myself because I am actually attending the show on its final day. But I do want to make sure I talk about a couple of things that happened this past week. Obviously, uh, there are a lot of leaks and a lot of rumors that are coming out. That is the case every single week. And because we're in 2020, there are a ton of new things that people are looking forward to. And the homies over at XDA, Max Weinbach in particular, leaked a bunch of information about the Samsung Galaxy S20. That's right, S20. It's not even the S11. Uh, It looks like Samsung's basically expecting this phone to be a massive leap from the previous and really well-regarded Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus. Now, a lot of the information that you might already know from these leaks and whatnot uh, have already been reported on by Jaime on the Pocket Now Daily, but I wanted to kind of rehash them just a little bit and give a couple of opinions on what I'm looking forward to when it comes to this particular device. Obviously, when it comes to Samsung phones, we're always excited for what a new phone will be like, and the S20, I mean, just leaping from 10 to 20 is already going to be an exciting prospect because maybe Samsung is going to put in a bunch of stuff that will really make this the phone to have, or at least set the price precedence for the rest of 2020. Also, it's 2020, so S20? Uh, I guess so. I wonder if they're just going to have the years be part of the naming scheme from now on. So if it's going to be the S20, 21, 22, all the way to 29, who knows what's going to happen in 2030. If we're going to have the S30, I mean, maybe it's just going to be in line with all of that. I don't know. I wouldn't put it past Samsung to actually think of things in that fashion. (laughs) In any case, one of the main things about the S20 is the fact that its display is going to still have that hole punch. Now, that hole punch is still going to be a little bit smaller than before. I guess they want to minimize it as much as they can throughout each iteration. Uh, But also, it's not going to necessarily be the edge display that we've seen on earlier devices, where it literally bleeds over the side. This is a little bit contrary to some of the displays that we were seeing at the end of 2019, where they pretty much called them waterfall displays. And what they were trying to do was make it so that 
that the phone was all display all the time, but there are a couple of reasons why this might be a better move from Samsung. I know that a lot of phones recently have had really good displays, especially ones that bleed over to the sides. That way you get as much display as possible. But the problem with that is that there might be some palm rejection issues. Even with my current Samsung Galaxy Note 10, the smaller one, uh, I have noticed that when I give the phone to people, sometimes they end up pressing things incorrectly over on the bottom of the device when they're trying to reach over. Uh, that's going to be alleviated with what might be the S20's display because it's a little bit flatter. It'll still have a little bit of that curve on the sides, but uh, I actually like that's not going to bleed over because honestly, palm rejection is still something that manufacturers are trying to figure out and waterfall displays might not be the most comfortable, especially if they're bigger. Speaking of the size, uh, there are going to be three versions of the S20 apparently, including the smaller S20, which is apparently not going to be called the S20e. Uh, we may or may not be getting an E device this time around. Instead, Samsung is going in the opposite direction, and they're apparently going to be making something that will be called like the Ultra. It's going to be a bigger, the biggest rather, version of the S20, while the S20 and the S20 Plus are going to be the more um, mainstream devices. Now let's go ahead and get into the other thing that people are always excited for with the new Galaxy device, and that's the cameras. All right, so anybody out there who didn't really like the trend that was happening with the iPhone 11s and the Pixel 4s of the world, well, it looks like we're going to be getting it in many other phones. It's going to be that big square on the back. You basically see like six different modules on there, and it might be that four of them are lenses. So we might be getting a main sensor. We're going to have a wide sensor, a zoom sensor, and then maybe even like a telephoto zoom, uh, like a really long periscopic type we're not too sure yet however one speculation or one thing rather that was shown in these leaks is that one of the cameras would be that 108 megapixel sensor that we saw in one other phone at least near the end of 2019 and that was the Xiaomi Mi Note 10 this is exciting to me because I was a big fan or I am a big fan of Xiaomi devices um, and the Mi Note 10 was a good example of how a high megapixel count camera could actually be quite effective. And the other thing too is that Xiaomi made it clear that they collaborated with Samsung in order to tune that camera for their new device. So obviously they did let the cat out of the bag a little bit that the sensor was an isocell sensor made by Samsung. It might be time for me to revisit uh, the Xiaomi Mi Note 10 just because of this. Uh, so I might actually pop my SIM card back into that. And I know that I haven't really done a full review on that particular phone just yet. I do plan on doing so, uh, especially as a look into what might be the future of Samsung's devices. If it is indeed the 108 megapixel sensor on the S20, well, we could get a quick look at it courtesy of Xiaomi. So we can look forward to what might set the precedent for the rest of the year in terms of of smartphone releases. So uh, I want to hear what all of you have to think. Let me know what you think in the comment sections down below. Answer the question, are you hyped for the Samsung Galaxy S20 and why? We'll answer some of the comments or respond to some of them in next week's episode. But with all that said, I'm actually almost there to where Adam Molina is right now. So I'm going to go ahead and pop it over to that segment where he and I talk about this very interesting and honestly refreshingly different show called NAM, made mostly for musicians and the vendors who help musicians actually get uh, their music and their artistry out there. Uh, there's a little bit of footage that you might see in the upcoming segment, but mainly I wanted Adam to kind of give us some insight into a trade show that honestly, it's it's pretty damn fun. Talk about a talk about a weird day. I know. Well, seriously. Not really, not really weird. It's just like we were running around, but that's really common for a show. Yeah. Uh, let me nothing just, out of the ordinary. Yeah, nothing really out of the ordinary. And we just saw each other at CES too. Yeah. So <laughs> kind of the reason why I wanted to bring you on, uh, by the way, sound guys, Adam Molina right here. Hello. Uh, why don't you go down and tell everybody because. You and I used to be colleagues, mm -hmm. uh, and we did a lot of podcasts together. Oh, yeah. This is the first time that I have you on for the Pocket Now Weekly. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I want to do with the show is actually show or rather introduce our audience to many more forms of tech. Mm -hmm. Because while Pocket Now is a mobile-centric site, there's so much more out there. And yeah. a lot of the paths actually intersect. And this was actually one of my favorite examples. Like right below us is, or right around us, is a show called NAM. Yeah. And being from an audio-centric website, I thought you'd be the perfect person to educate our audience as to what exactly this all is. Oh yeah, <laughs> NAM is basically like CES, but for audio gear. Mm -hmm. So like all of the people, all the companies that make guitars, that make amps, that make even lights, like lighting sections, things like that, that's yeah. where they come to show off their newest products, their newest gear. This is it. 
So it's like what CES is to the tech space, NAM is to like the music world and the music gear world. Yeah. So it's really interesting. Yeah. So I mean, coming from sound guys, obviously the connections with you and with mm. mobile technology would be like wireless audio, yeah. headphones. Yeah. This is our first year doing NAM because normally we are focused on like things that kind of are peripheries to the phone. Yeah. Kind of like Pocket Now, I would assume. Like that's why you're here. Like we're trying yeah. to get a more of a audio. Cons not concentric, I guess like audio focused world, mm -hmm. worldly view of audio, I guess, yeah. if that makes any sense. Because, yeah, most of those things we do is Bluetooth speakers, headphones, true wireless earbuds, things oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, for sure. But I mean, there's so much more to audio, and this mm -hmm. is like the perfect show for that because there's yeah. everything from synthesizers to violins we were talking about oh, earlier. Oh, yeah, it's I'm gonna have some footage of that a little yeah. bit later, but like, there's so there's a hall A that's way over there. Mm -hmm. Then there's B right here, and then there's C. Hall C is the one that really blew my mind mm -hmm. because you go from digital literally to analog. Yeah. So it's once like within a few steps. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so once I walk through there, and then you just see like all of these guitars, all of these yeah. violins, all these pianos, and like on the one hand, it's really loud over there. Yeah. Then suddenly it becomes really refreshingly quiet. Oh yeah. Over it's there. It's like one of my favorite things was walking from like that kind of electronic to analog thing what you were talking about and it becomes like almost like a guitar center yeah where like you can walk in and they have just beautiful guitars hanging from their booths and ukuleles i play ukulele so like you could just pick it up and just jam out for a bit right there on the show floor and you can actually hear yourself playing and it's really cool <laughs> oh yeah and also shout out to anybody who might have been at ces with us a couple of weeks back oh, yeah. um one thing that i that isa actually found out was Oh, okay, first of all, one thing I noticed, mm -hmm. as we were walking through the loud hall, which would be the A hall. The loud hall. <laughs> <laughs> um, even though this is an audio-based show, it's all about music and audio and whatnot, it's a lot quieter than CES. Oh my god, I know. Right? CES was like, uh, can I curse on here? A little bit. It's a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> no arguments here. Yeah, but NAM is way more, like one of the first things that stood out to me when I got here was just how more like more thoughtfully organized everything was because like you were saying like they have the the quieter instruments all in one corner so yeah. like no matter where you're walking around you're not having your ears blown out by drums yeah but then if you go in another hall they have all the drums so it's just mayhem because everyone's there drumming mm -hmm. and it like it works perfectly because you're no you don't need quiet when you're around drums but, but you kind of need it around ukuleles <laughs> but the thing that isa found out was that all of the booths are actually tuned to specific decibels. Really? They actually patrol oh, wow. it so that when they go there and they set up their boots, they have to make sure that all the stuff that might end up being played mm. or anything like that uh, meets a certain decibel level. Oh, that's really interesting. So that the noise pollution is not super high. That's perfect. Because it would suck. Okay, first of all, this is something that I know because I used to work with this guy. <laughs> the CES booth mm -hmm. for AA and uh, for Sound Guys and all that, isn't it right next to that one booth that Earthquake. just came? Earthquake. Earthquake. <laughs> Miserable. <laughs> it's like they just blast random top 20 hits yep. constantly. Or and like they have a, yeah, it's just miserable. And it's all of their like, um, it's all of their subwoofers. Yeah. So it's like They're really loud super stuff. bassy and whatnot. And it sucks because like, as the sound guy, like we all drool over that stuff. So we're like across the hall from them and we're like, oh, that's so cool. Look at all their speakers. And then like the show starts and we're like, can you please just turn it down a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, so... As far as NAM is concerned, you know, this is the first time, mm -hmm. but you're in the music world a little yeah. bit and whatnot. So what would be your highlights of a show like this? Uh, definitely the MPC one, which is by Akai. And it's, so you know, the Kanye MPC that you always see like in Runaway, mm -hmm. where he's just like hitting the, ta the, yes. the pads and he's like making that live drums. Jay Dilla obviously is like the legend on MPC. So MPCs are usually like really expensive and completely out of my personal price range, even on a splurge. It's like I could get an MPC or a car, but they just came out with a cheaper one, the MPC one, which is an entry level MPC and it's oh. standalone and it's dollless. You don't need, you can hook it up to like a computer if you want to, but you don't need to. And you could still jam out the same way that you would with the regular MPCs. There's like some things it's missing, but Nothing that an uh, entry-level person is going to miss. Okay. Like, Kanye probably is not going to use it because he's like, I'll just get the, the high-end one. <laughs> yeah. But, like, me in my bedroom that I just want something to, like, jam out with, it's it's perfect. And oh, it was, yeah. like, 
The price point is really attractive. I think it was like six ninety nine or five ninety nine, something like that. That's not too bad. It's not bad. It's not great, but like the other NPCs are like two Gs. Yeah, so yeah. So it's like, uh, yeah. and like I think the NPC live is like a G. Mm -hmm. So even still, it's like you're taking off a couple hundred dollars, and you're not really missing much of the functionality. Like. That's perfect for me. I'll take that. Okay. That's yeah. Great. What about you? What was your uh, well? I'll, okay. So for Nam, I looked at the vendor list mm -hmm. and I was like, who here could possibly be anywhere near my yeah. beat? And I actually went to um, the the one hall that's way that way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so where Zoom and Tascam and all them are, because you're listening to a podcast right now. I was looking for microphones and Smart, yeah. and podcasting equipment. Over at Zoom, they actually had this huge soundboard just for podcasting. So. It looked That's like so cool. your typical soundboard with all the levels and uh, the sliders and whatnot. Mm. But at the top, you have like eight inputs and whatnot. Wow. This is my favorite part, though. You see right here I'm using <laughs> kind of a hacky way of doing this podcast. Genius. Well, I mean. <laughs> Half I, of I, audio is hacking shit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I do a lot of experimentation with gear all over the place mm. in order to achieve the stuff that our viewers and listeners kind of consume, right? Mm -hmm. They were telling me, and I was laughing the whole time they were saying it, it's a big board. Yeah. And they said, yeah, it's good for travel. And I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> False. <laughs> <laughs> like, if anything, the Zoom H6, which is what I typically use for these shows, mm -hmm. is the travel thing. Yeah. But to make this soundboard, I get what they're saying. It's for the type of people who want one bag, sit down at a table, set up all of the mics and uh, mic okay. stands and all that stuff. So well, instead, how big is it? Like, It's maybe like this. So and it's like a it's a board, yeah. right? It's not a huge not like too sound. Bad, yeah, I see what you mean. It's not like a huge studio wall or anything mm. like that, but it is a board, you know. Um, aside from all of that, though, there's all those microphones uh, mm. that obviously are going to be more for like musicians and for instruments and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those were the main things that I saw. Not a whole lot here from the pocket now or even JV side. But I will admit, being here. It reminded me how much I enjoy audio. Yeah. You know, and same. It, it was very inspirational to just be here and just walk around. Yeah, you know, and you know, there's all this like enjoyment to be had when it comes to audio products. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I really enjoyed is that uh, you know, my badge actually says one more on it. <laughs> it's a truly it's a wireless audio brand and they're actually here. They were showing off some pretty dope stuff. Mm. Um, did, did you get a chance to take a look no, at it? I didn't get a chance. All right, so let me tell you, like, because one of our friends is actually working at one more. Mm -hmm. It's partially the reason why I'm even here. <laughs> um, they have ANC truly wireless earbuds. That oh, yeah, okay. I tried it. I'm not gonna lie. It it can rival the Sony's. Wow. Um, for two reasons. Interesting. Number one, it's a direct competitor, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they have ANC on there. And what was funny was I was wearing them. The design has like this, like, it looks like carbon fiber, but it's not. Um, but it's a plastic design, has ear hooks. Okay. That's already something that's different. <laughs> I tried them on, and I thought to myself, yeah, it sounds pretty good. And then she goes, oh, double tap, uh, just to make sure you have the ANC on. When I double tapped it, it's a loud haul. Yeah. I double tapped it, everything disappeared. Wow. And that's I was so like, cool. only the Sonys make me feel that way. Interesting. By I the way, the AirPods Pro doesn't make me feel that way. <laughs> the ANC on those is Shade. okay. Well, the ANC on those are okay. Yeah, They're but not good. Sony level. They're not Sony level. Yeah, Sony's OD. This is interesting, and the other reason why I think these are true competitors to the Sony's, mm. fifty dollars less. Wow. So sub so two hundred. Like one seventy nine, one ninety nine. One ninety nine. That's interesting. Which I thought was like, wow, because right now I think two forty nine, I think it may have come down to two twenty nine at the mm -hmm. at the most. Yeah, but they're like a year old now at this point. Yeah. So like that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. So those coming out pretty soon, super excited for those. Yeah. So what I found so interesting is that the worlds are intersecting. Mm -hmm. So truly wireless earbuds, truly wireless audio, yeah. they have a place at a show like this. Mm -hmm. And it's just really fun to go to something that's not one of the typical shows we always yeah. go to. That's why I wanted to present it here, you know yeah. what I mean? It is really interesting to have like this crowd walking around and I guess walking up to like a true wireless booth and being like interested because that's not typically the audience. Like this is like the hardcore audiophile, like wired, wired, wired. Yeah. But it's starting to expand because Bluetooth is getting a little bit better. Yeah, ex <laughs> indeed. Speaking of which, mm -hmm. um, you know, so you talked about the synths. Actually, one of our homies, uh, Hayato, is here. Oh, yeah. Um, he was in the guitar area the entire time and he's all about, he's, he actually plays and he, he loves that. Really well. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, in your case, you're talking about your highlights here, but we, we talked a little bit about wireless audio. Obviously, mm. since you're from Sound Guys, um, one thing I wanted to ask you for our audience is mm. like, do you have, what recommendations would you make 
to somebody coming into 2020 might be new to the audio game and whatnot. Okay. Are there any products that were really highlights for you recently? From that the show? Oh, no, in general. Oh, just in general? Um, Speaking of like putting the sound guy's hat on, you know, like what recommendations would you give people right now? So if it's going to be the best of the best, like you don't care about money, it's still going to be the Sony WH-1000X Mark III's. Okay. Just because those are like classics. You can't mm -hmm. go wrong with that. But if you don't want to spend $350 plus taxes, oh, that gets a little tougher. Maybe like, I would say for me, the one, well, so personally my workhorse headphones that I use is not wireless. Mm -hmm. It's the Sony MDR-7506s. Okay. They're like classic wired headphones. Like you've seen them all over the place here if you're just trying something out. The regular black ones from like, I forgot when it came out. I want to say like 86 or something like that. Like uh, mid, like 80s headphones. Yeah. But those are amazing. They're like lightweight. They're durable. You can beat them up. They fold. They're not wireless though, which is the only issue that we have now with our phones. Mm -hmm. But like for what we do, I think it's perfect. Like, so those are the headphones that I've been so using. So you wouldn't go for the uh, WHs? No. If really? I, I don't have a pair of WHs. Okay. Everyone else does. Everyone, <laughs> everyone around me loves WH-1000X Mark III's. Yeah. Personally, I like the Sony MDR 7506s, which is aren't those, uh, not sponsored by Sony, <laughs> but yeah, they make great headphones. But those aren't the extra bass ones, are they? No, no, not okay. the extra bass ones. Those are good too, though, but those are... Actually, yeah, if you get those on sale, because when they came out, they were only like $50 cheaper than the WH-1000X Mark III's. And I was like, for that, just get the WH-1000X Mark III's. But if I think now they're like almost half price. Oh, okay. It's so like if you could get them for like 140, those are steel because they have the active noise canceling, they have the touch sensitive ear pads, they have extra bass, which a lot of people love. Mm -hmm. So like that's good. But I prefer wired all day. Okay. <laughs> At least with like the work we do. Like if you're producing audio or like mixing audio, I don't trust the wireless yet for that. And would you say that's more because of latency or is it? I would say it's just because of I know stigma. Some Oh, Cause really? Like, yeah, because like David, uh, my coworker David Immel, he uses the Sony WH-1000X's, edits his videos perfectly fine, no problems. I just can't get there yet. It makes ah, me nervous. Ah, <laughs> gotcha. I can see that. Yeah. You know, the WHs, they can become wired. Yeah, you could just plug them in and make them yeah. wired. That kind but of you still have to purpose. turn them on yeah. for that purpose. Well, the yeah. other thing, the headphones that I use are only like $79.99. Mm. So it's like a steal yeah <laughs> you know you heard it here first like the sound guy himself is saying you don't have to go paying 300 plus dollars yeah, for good audio necessary. because I know people who are straight up like that they they don't want to go wireless because the audio fidelity of a wired headphone yeah. is still mm -hmm. key and like it's getting there like especially at CES Bluetooth announced a bunch of cool stuff that is going to make it a little bit better but as far as just straight up I need this to work right now like it's hard to beat a headphone jack and like yeah. a wired headphone do you, uh, do you ever get into, because I actually have a couple in my bag, mm -hmm. do you ever get into the USB-C adapters that have DAX installed and whatnot? Like I, I do, <laughs> but only because I have to. Okay. I don't really feel like they're necessary. Okay. Because, like, DAX in our phones are so freaking good nowadays. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you can get a DAC, an external DAC that's better, but it's not really going to make a crazy discernible difference if you're, like, on the subway commuting somewhere sure. like if you're in a studio and you have everything hooked up like i don't know why you're using a usb-c DAC anyway but if if that scenario then yeah you might be able to get like a little bit better quality mm -hmm. but if i'm taking the subway to manhattan i'm not going to notice it anyway yeah, yeah so yeah. like there's really no point <laughs> yeah that makes sense because i feel like the people who are like i'll use the term belly aching about okay. the lack of a headphone jack mm -hmm. The thing is, if you already have, if you're that into audio, you probably already have the equipment needed yeah. in order to enjoy the audio the way yeah. you want. So, like, some of the people who are at it are probably just, like, spec hungry and all mm. that. So, yeah, I mean, you know, if, if you know, you know. That's one of those yeah, things. Yeah, pretty much. All right, cool. <laughs> well, I appreciate you being here yeah, on the thanks show. Thanks for having me. Uh, sorry for the time crunch. <laughs> yeah, um, no but worries. This guy's got to get to the airport in, like, a minute. Um, but, yeah, go ahead and let everybody know where to find you. And oh, yeah. Uh, I am Adam Molina. You can find me at soundguys.com. I tweet from Real Sound Guys and on Instagram, also Real Sound Guys. So just check me out there. Awesome. And then his personal uh, social media and all that stuff, you'll find that oh, in yeah. the description. In also there. in the show notes and whatnot. Thank you so much, buddy. We got to get you on more. I yeah, know that if there's fun. anybody who can do a remote podcast with me, <laughs> it's got to be I you. I can make it work. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No worries. All right, cool. So we're going to go ahead and pop into a little bit of a break, and then I'll be responding to some of your comments from last week. 
Today's show is sponsored by Caseta Smart Lighting Control from Lutron Pioneers and Smart Home Technology. A lot of people think you need smart bulbs to get smart lighting, but there is a smarter way. Caseta's smart dimmers and switches replace the switch in your wall so that all the lights controlled by that switch will act smart. Think about all of the places in your home where one switch controls multiple bulbs, like ceiling lights, chandeliers, bathrooms, and more. With Caseta, you'll save money by replacing the switches instead of replacing all of the bulbs, because smart bulbs are only smart when the switch is on. If someone flips it off, you can say goodbye to smart control and connectivity. But Caseta switches are always smart even if the switch is off. With Caseta dimmers, you don't need to buy smart bulbs to enjoy smart lighting. You actually get the best of both worlds. Smart lighting control from an app or your voice and control right at the switch. As you can probably tell, or as I've said in this episode, I'm at CES 2020, which is not too far from home, but I can still monitor things with my smart cameras at home and be able to turn on the lights and make sure they are turning on at certain hours of the night to make it seem like somebody is home. I can have all of that with the app, even though I'm nowhere near my home at the moment. So you can get smart lighting the smart way with Caseta by Lutron Smart Switches. Learn more about Caseta at Lutron.com slash weekly. That is Lutron.com slash weekly. So I mentioned in the previous segment that this is like the loud area. You can see like it's all of that going on right now and you can hear the craziness. But as I walk through this little hallway that connects Hall A and B, it gets quieter and quieter. And that's honestly incredibly refreshing because we have uh, the analog space here. And the only things you might end up hearing are live instruments, like right now. People testing out the products. I take it back. I went one more hall, and now we're in the drums and percussions area. It's really loud here. Ah, that's a little bit better. And now finally, coming into the very end of this hall area, guitars. And for the most part, all of the guitars are electric guitars plugged into some amps with headphones on. So again, uh, a lot less, a lot less loud, a lot quieter here than in other halls. But yeah, this is uh, kind of a quick look at what Nam is like before I get into our final segment. Ah, that's much better. Here is an example of just some of the crazy cool stuff that you can find at a show like this. Obviously it was super loud out there, but now I'm in what is called a sound isolation room. You might recognize a little booth like this. Uh, Michael Fisher happens to have one. But yeah, stuff like this can can range up to like $15,000. Just to have a place like this that makes everything outside sound like a whisper. But with all that said, I'm gonna go ahead and get into some of our comments from last week. Obviously, uh, I brought something a little bit different this week because I was at a new type of tech show and it was really nice to see something different from a trade show after all of the craziness that was CES 2020. Uh, speaking of which, last week's episode was with Nick Gray and of course, Issa Rodriguez. Uh, and the three of us were able to talk about some of our favorites from the show. And I wanna go through a couple of your comments from last week. By the way, not too many comments on last week's episode, perfectly fine. I know that it was a discussional podcast, but I wanna make sure to remind all of you to get into the uh, comment sections down below and talk about or answer the question of the episode. Last episode, there wasn't really too much of a question because it was a discussional podcast, but this week I want to know what you all think about the leaks and the hype regarding the Samsung Galaxy S20. Haha, ha, 2020's tech future is bright. It really does seem that way. Uh, 2019 seemed to have been a bit of an experimental time where we were trying out some new concepts. Obviously, when it comes to CES, we actually got a real concept from one plus in that electrochromatic or electrochromic glass on the back that hides the cameras. But all of the different concepts that we saw in 2019 that made us excited for what comes next, well, guess what? All of that stuff is coming next. I will upgrade my S9 Plus to S20 Ultra in March or February, so get excited for it, or rather so excited for it. Yeah, go for it. I mean, the S9 was a great phone, the S9 Plus in particular, a little bit bigger, did bring a lot to the table. I still think that the S10s are going to be an immense value when it comes to uh, what phones you might be looking for in 2020, and if all of the phones coming out this year are still a little bit outside of your price budget, uh, you can always go to the S10s. They're still solid devices, probably some of my favorites from last year. I love this one. I thought that was Tim Schofield in the thumbnail. No, that was Nick Gray. Uh, that is the editor-in-chief of Fandroid. Uh, and yeah, it's always great to have him on. Uh, we're gonna try to have him on more often because Nick has been asking to be on the show quite often. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna make sure to do so. I just need to make sure his audio is good for remote podcasts. 
And finally, hi guys, what mics did you use? Now, this is a bit of an involved question, but I am at an audio show, so this might be the perfect time for me to say uh, that I've done a ton of research into the kinds of equipment that I want to use in these podcasts or just in my videos and content in general. Now, in particular, I happen to use Zoom products. Those are the digital recorders that I use. But the microphones that I actually use for the podcast, especially the ones that you see that are on my face, uh, those are actually stage mics. That's like the technical term for them. Those are the kinds of mics that you would find uh, during Broadway shows or musical shows. Uh, and they're the ones that you see people usually having uh, on their face for those situations. I did joke for a little bit, though, that they were pastor mics because, yes, if you go to church, if you happen to have that experience, you know that the priests or the pastors tend to have those mics as well. So I found a way of sort of molding those things together. I really like my face mics because they ensure that the audio is as good as possible. Obviously, I'm not using one right now because I knew I was going to come into this booth. Uh, so I'm just using my shotgun mic right now. It's a Deity uh, Pro mic uh, that I have. It's an on-camera microphone shotgun. Uh, so yeah, it's a typical vlogging microphone, but since I'm in this environment right now, I figured it would be all right for me to use this for this final segment. Speaking of this final segment, I'm gonna go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching uh, and for listening, depending on where you might be finding our podcast. If you are watching it, don't forget to get into the comment sections down below. Uh, and if you're listening to it, head over to YouTube to answer the question about how you feel about the Samsung Galaxy S20, the S20 Plus, the S20 Ultra, whatever the case may be. Uh, from there, though, don't forget to follow Pocket Now all across the different social medias. And of course, on YouTube, you can hit subscribe down there and also hit the bell over on the side to keep up with everything Jaime and I are doing. Obviously, I take care of the weekly every week, uh, that this is your podcast and show every week. And then Jaime takes care of other content, including the Pocket Now Daily. You can also look forward to some content from me here as well. I do have a couple of videos coming up on Pocket Now. And of course, when it comes to show coverage, we have MWC coming up and I'll probably be contributing there as well. That's about a month away though, and there's a lot happening up until then. So stay tuned to Pocket Now for even more. And once again, I'll just call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching or listening, and we will see you in our next episode.